Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Excelsior, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Wasteland 3. As we gear up to cross one more name off our list. A list which is, uh, at this point, actually becoming a bit on the short side. It's really just Steel Trap and the Scar Collectors, whatever's left of the Dorseys, and then Liberty herself. Followed by, uh, most likely, Angela Death. I don't think she uh, approves of our methods. Silly us, actually out here killing raiders instead of, you know, uniting them and sicking them on neighboring communities to buy ourselves more time. Oh, I'll also note that uh, we have apparently suffered our first casualty of sorts. Uh, apparently, somewhere along the line, we lost track of Poltron. Uh, I believe it was right after we picked up Courage uh, and before we fought the Golden Scorpitron and entered Yuma County. It's possible that it died during an off-screen encounter. Uh, I did do a little bit of grinding. But it's just as likely it was the result of a bug. Really, um, I might go back and recollect him, but... For now, we'll just assume that he returned to the coop back at Ranger HQ. He was one of our most ineffectual combatants anyway. Sorry, Poltron. Anyway, let's uh, get back to it. The tech mines. Junkyard, maybe? That would uh, certainly make sense if this is a racetrack. Company store. Hmm. Some sort of storage shed? This place reminds me of that space station drawing from the Patriarch's Museum. <laughs> really? Oh, so that's not, uh, that's not a storage shed. That's like an airlock. Huh. Well, you know, I'd, uh, I'd question a station somehow surviving, plummeting through the Earth's atmosphere, but, uh, sure, why not? It's certainly not the first time we're suspending our disbelief. So where does this go? Oh, that's very uh, distinctive. Look at all that blood. Someone was attacked. There are shattered cyborg limbs and signs of a struggle in the snow. Whoever was jumped here put up a hell of a fight. Old blood and drag marks lead northwest. Right? That does not look like a reputable establishment. These ruins don't look like they were built on the ground. More like they embedded there after falling from a great height. I suppose those do kind of look like uh, giant thrusters. Maybe they tried to slow their descent. Someone spent a long time painting these block letters, and then someone else knocked this sign a kilter. Eh, it's fine. I think it gives it uh, some nice character. Let's have a quick peek. I can't help but notice that at least three of these guys are marked as hostile.
The turrets aren't unusual, but I'm a little nervous about that guy. Let's have a peek inside the airlock. Then we'll uh, follow the tracks around the station. Enemies. Scar collectors, of course. An exoskeleton. I didn't realize you could get more than one set of that. Oh, sh And we are fighting. This is an unfortunate situation. Let's get a decoy up. And get rid of this guy. Yeah, we'll just uh, clog up the whole doorway. Half our squad stuck out in the open, so we want to give these guys pause. sharp. That was quick. Die, wretched vermin! Ow. Oh, I did not. I did not account for burst attacks. Look at that thing. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's do some damage control. Good enough. Now let's trim high priority targets. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yeah, let's get rid of the exploding guy first.
and the overlords gotta go next. Yeah, yeah. Now let's start whittling down this thing. Man, look at that. Really makes you wonder what their uh, mecha bison would have looked like. Oh, right, we've got that guy just outside the door. Let's do a little trimming here. Thank you, Ian. I think we're good. We'll just shuffle right up front to draw fire. Knew you had Rude. <laughs> oh. It's pretty much over at this point. Get those gaping wounds patched. Die on your own time, people. Holy shit. You, guys? you know what? Hold that thought. Just got to do a quick head count here. Okay, I think we all made it. I will admit, the uh, realization that I lost Poltron has made me a bit paranoid about losing anyone else. He didn't really contribute, but I do still miss him. Whoa, nice work wrecking the guards. Who are you guys? 
This woman doesn't look like the other slaves in the mine. She has the tattoos, scars, and shoddy implants of a scar collector. She might be the missing singer Whetstone mentioned. We're the Desert Rangers. Ah, the new cops on the block. Well, I usually don't like cops, but I ain't gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Thanks for the rescue. What is this place? Steel Traps Tech Mine. It's supposed to be a crashed satellite or something. Anyway, it's filled with old tech stuff. Some of it's worth cash, most of it's trash, but when you got slaves digging it out for you, it ain't hard making a profit, right? Nice. I think that might actually be one of my favorite post apoc concepts. The idea of uh, these sprawling pre-war structures being treated like salvage mines or tech mines. Uh, also worth noting, um, you may recall way back at the beginning of the series when we first explored Ranger HQ, uh, Peterson Air Force Base. We found that room full of dead slaves that La Perla had been transporting as well as a note with both her initials and the initials ST, which apparently was Steel Trap. Took a while to get there, but I am glad we finally got some closure. Are you D-Sharp? That's me. Used to call myself D-Sharp Singer. Now, I guess I'm D-Sharp Minor. <laughs> Uh, that's a joke. Get it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Most amusing, I'm sure. <laughs> and thank you, Lucia. Weird Steel Trap had it out for you. That how you ended up here? That fucking fuck. There I was, minding my own business, running the company store, singing the hits and slinging the schlitz, when he decides he doesn't like one of my songs and kidnaps me. Puts me to work digging for tech in this death trap hellhole. Well, what was your song about? Steel Trap. I rhymed slimy skunk with uh, rusty junk and whiny bleeder with world's worst leader. You know, subtle, lots of hidden meaning. Yeah, yeah, subtle. So, Steel Trap's a bad leader, then? He's all talk. We're the toughest gang in the wastes. Yeah, well, no thanks to him. All he does is kill SCs who aren't loyal to him. And now, he's kissing this Buchanan bitch's ass, hoping she'll feed him scraps when she takes down her daddy. Loser. Bit of a tangent, but uh, how'd you end up running the company store? Run it? I started it. Wherever the SCs go, they want sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So I decided I'd provide. Got an old bus, a still, some girls, some boys, a band, and put the waste first traveling juke joint on the road. When the gang camps, we set up in whatever shack we can find and let the good times roll. Made me money, made the SCs happy. But with Steel Trap in charge, the gang has less to spend and they're always pissed off. He's cost me money and staff and goodwill. He's got to go. Hmm. Did you know Cutterthroat has been running the company store since you've been gone? Yeah. My guards tortured me with that. Fucking no-talent skank. I wouldn't hire her to clean a fucking latrine. And now she's the boss? And she's singing? <sighs> she's going down. Permanently. 
You know, the uh, Scar Collectors looked for you for weeks after you disappeared, and swore vengeance on your kidnapper. The guards here thought that was hilarious. Tell me how the boys had all gone hunting for me. They'd say, if only they knew Steel Trap hid you right under their noses, they'd carve him up in a hot second. And I thought, well, someday I'm going to tell them. So, let's say we were, hypothetically, looking at uh, removing Steel Trap from the picture. Would you want in? Goddamn right I would. That motherfucker has it coming. But I got another score to settle first. If you don't mind. Yeah, I think we can work with that. As long as you help us with Steel Trap. Count on it. But first... I gotta pay a visit to the company store. Time to take back what's mine. Meet me over there. Okay, let's just, uh, secure the control room real quick, and then we will see what D is up to. Soviet security pass. A plain plastic key card labeled in Russian. Your guess is it provides top-level access in the Soviet space station. Oh, so this is a Russian satellite. Intriguing. Oh, and we missed one container back in the entrance. Betamax tape. Besides a few dents, the Betamax tape is in good condition. Holds a damning recording of Steel Trap and Liberty. I've got to say, Steel Trap seems uh, really bad at covering his tracks. But I suppose that really just uh, goes towards proving how unsuited he is for a leadership position. Hmm. Let's get Dahl on point. Right through that wall, huh? These control panels look like they could steer a ship, or a flying ship, based on the three axes in the display. That's just about everything. We've obviously got more to explore, but we're going to uh, go take care of business at the company store. Then we will uh, double back and finish clearing the mines. There you are. Listen, I thought I was up for helping you fight Cutter, but... Turns out, slaving non-stop in Steel Trap's mind is kind of taking it out of me. <sighs> I'm as weak as a prairie dog. If you want my help, maybe you could take her out first. Yeah, look. Our charitable nature only gets you so far. You want more help? Then let's talk about Steel Trap first. Any ideas for bringing him down? All right, fine. Let's talk. 
And now that you mention it, maybe I do have an idea. I didn't believe what the guards told me about the boys missing me and swearing to kill whoever took me. But now that you told me the same thing... Well, I've been thinking about making a play for Steel Trap Spot even before, but... When I heard the guards talking, I thought... If I ever get out of there, I might just have the support to give it a try. Maybe it's time to find out. Oh, uh, you know what? We will get back to you on that. I think we need more intel before we're comfortable replacing one warlord with another. But for what it's worth, she seems okay so far. She's still a raider, but she is a bit more focused on vice over violence. Uh, current vengeance trip accepted. We'll think it over. Get a bit more uh, context. All right, but I ain't gonna stand here forever. Hurry back. I figure we'll go have a quick chat with Cutter, see what her side of the story is. Though I am still a bit nervous about those guys who are tagged as hostile. As we just saw, uh, we're at the point where losing initiative can cost us half our squad, or worse, one of the pet pals. And we are standing right out in the open here. Um, let's push up to that table. We'll uh, sort of hunker down and then have Rhett initiate conversation. Uh, fuck off! Can't you see we're closed? Oh boy, did you pick the wrong door to walk through. This is a private club, Lemos. Scar collectors only. Everybody else gets the axe. Hey, boys! 86 this trash! Oh, good. Uh-huh. Oh. Hey, okay, stop. We're already dead. Oh, man. Thank goodness Rhett is some sort of hideous spider behemoth. And thank goodness for uh, Major Tom and the zoo crew, huh? Okay, there's Gun Bunny. So everyone's alive and accounted for. Despite that blistering hellstorm of plasma fire. We're in it now. Oh, you know what? That's actually not that bad. I figured everyone but Rhett was a pile of smoldering ash, but turns out it was really just Lucia and Pazepi. Thank you, Bonkers. And now we kill. Return fire.
she's probably fine. I mean, certain definitions of fine. Finally ground, maybe. Medic. You're a lifesaver. Right, Lucia's arm. I will say, uh, that was uh, rather hectic, but uh, surprisingly bracing. I especially liked Rhett just weathering the storm of perpetual plasma fire. Can't believe we actually made it back. Well few new blood stains, but that just gives the place character. Never thought I'd say this, but damn, I missed this rocket fuel hooch. It's great to have the company store back up and running the way it was meant to be. Hmm. Some uh, surprisingly positive vibes, despite the circumstances these folks find themselves in. Fusion Launcher. This weapon's projectiles carry a massive charge and will continue to arc dangerously for some time after impact. <laughs> that sounds awful. AoE damage is uh, one of the biggest dangers to the Pet Pals and Team November, so... Hard pass. I can't believe we actually made it back. Looks like we've still got a fair amount of time left on the clock, so let's have a quick follow-up with Miss Sharp, and then we will see about clearing the rest of the mines. Huh. Let's shut her up. Finally. But I can't make my play for Steel Trap spot till all his goons are cleared out of the mines. <laughs> Don't want to be fighting on two fronts. Help me out, yeah? Is that it? Finish clearing Steel Trap's goons out of the mine? I was still working on it. Well, keep me posted. Not gonna relax until they're dead. Huh, okay. Well, here we go killing again. A ranger's work is never done. I also can't help but note that uh, the game is essentially giving us no choice with setting her up as the Scar Collector's new leader, which I guess is fine. I mean, like I said, she seems pretty okay for a Scar Collector, but I suppose that's fine. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll just come back and mow her down too. And uh, let's be honest, the Desert Rangers are no strangers to having to clean up their own messes. They do seem to uh, spend an awful lot of time having to uh, deal with the consequences of their own poorly thought out actions. Looking at you, Angie. So what do we have here? Ooh, minigun turret. That's new. Okay, okay. We've got an obvious side path to the right. And then that's the command room to the left. Oh. 
two turrets. That makes it slightly trickier. Yep, and then we've got Scar Collectors just past that. What is that? Oh man, and we actually cannot disarm that. Yeah, we're one point short. Wow. I mean, we could use... We have a skill book. No, no. I'd rather save that. Besides, uh, it's not like we can't take out a couple of turrets. In fact, I'd say our squad is actually uniquely well-suited for it. We can't do this in real time. Let's toggle turn-based. No! Thank you, doll. one. Huh. No line of sight. And that's two. I guess we'll just uh, hunker down and see what happens. You know what? That that really feels like a bad idea. Brett, you just um why don't you just hold? Goodbye. Huh. Could have sworn it told me I, I would have line of sight from here. Not there, they'll just flank and shoot her anyway. And here we go. In retrospect, I really should have seen that coming.
Oh no, they have cloaking technology. Oh, there he is. Now just his legs are cloaked. I think we've just got the bomb left, so... Bonkers? Research I could do here if the scammers weren't stealing it all. Um, I don't think they're going to be here much longer, Bazeppi, so, uh, you should be able to research to your heart's content. Okay, so that leads to the control center. And this is obviously a living area. This place looks more like a building than a mine, but everything is topsy-turvy. These cots are riveted to the walls. Riveting. Cosmonaut logs. The label reads, Space Habitat Daily Logs. Neat. Okay, Lyshenko. Today only, we speak American, yes? We practice for glorious invasion. Ah, Shotsky. I mean, yes. When great day comes, no one will be knowing. We are not good old American boys. <laughs> oh, I start, okay? <clears throat> Hello to you, Fred. I would like hot dog, if you please. Of course, pal. One hot dog to be coming up. Would like eating fried potatoes as well? Thank you. What kind of American am being if I'm not liking fried potatoes? It is best. Yes. Yes, yes, it is best. It is... Er, uh, Are you hearing beeping? Like... Altitude meter? Oh, please, Shonsky. This is not being typical American conversation. Ask me about uh, my picking up truck. No, Lyshenko. I think there is a problem. We... Well, I'm not... I'm not sure what that tells us. Don't badmouth french fries, I guess. There we go. That's something we can actually handle. I guess the level 9 alarm was just there to make it slightly more difficult to get the drop on the scar collectors. Hmm. Oh! Well then... Processing. Processing. All right, um, let's go ahead and burn off that skill book. I really did want to save that thing until we could hit nine and sneaky stuff, but uh, 
looking at it here, that would actually take her two more levels, and I just... I don't think we're actually going to hit that before we hit the end of the game. So, we might as well burn it off now and uh, see what's in here. We never did find a trinket for sneaking, did we? I know there's one in the game. I've seen... I've seen pictures of it. Hmm. Well, let's see what we got here. Hopefully something good. So obviously setting off those alarms would have triggered these turrets. And man, I don't even know what these turrets are. Some sort of heavy machine guns or recoilless rifles? I guess something that would have to be able to operate in space. The real blood staff. <laughs> the actual real, real blood staff. Obviously completely useless to us, but uh, still a fun callback to the original wasteland. Is that a security terminal there? Nope, that's a corpse. Riveting. Another security pass, and a bottle cap flag. An American flag constructed out of bottle caps from various American breweries. That's actually a somewhat familiar sight down where I live. It does seem like an odd thing to find on a Cold War Soviet satellite, though. Some sort of sealed chamber. Oh, and another one on the left. All right, let's see if we can get some answers here. The computer banks in this section are still receiving auxiliary power from somewhere. All of the text is in Cyrillic lettering. The console screen flickers weakly. All its readouts and commands are in Cyrillic lettering. Ian, if you would. With a few keystrokes, you gain access to the source code and discover a masked program labeled aldrichames.exe. It appears to be a front end for use by Soviet agents working in the United States. As the software boots, the screen changes from grim yellow text to red, white, and blue, complete with animated American flag. The command prompt appears again, in English. The screen offers access to the automated security systems and the logs of Podpolkovnik Gagarin, station commander. I'm sure I didn't butcher that. And that, I imagine, would have just turned the turrets to our side. Hmm. As the targeting protocols execute, doors around the room open, revealing several deadly looking security drones. Most seem uninterested in you, but one moves close and seems to follow your movements. Oh, okay. Well, hey there. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> you said it, buddy. So is this thing actually following us now? 
Oh, <laughs> look at that. We got our own pet killer. Granted, it might have been more fun to get one of those scavenger bots, but I think a killer might be slightly more effective. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, let's have a look at those logs. Oh, intriguing. All from the same day. Which would be Doomsday, unless I'm uh, mistaken. I guess that would make sense. Station log. Podpolkovnik Gagarin, recording. Earthrise was especially beautiful today. We continue to monitor the construction of the Citadel Star Station as ordered. The project is dangerously close to completion. Those NATO pigs will have far too much power if it becomes fully operational. Soviet Command's plan to remove it will become clear soon, I am sure. The Citadel Star Station is gone. Our telemetry picked up a meteor shower and they did nothing to move out of the way. I knew the Americans and their capitalist cronies and NATO were stupid, but this is beyond belief. They just sat there and allowed the most powerful piece of technology in orbit to be obliterated. Awaiting orders. It has happened. Nuclear war. The Americans have no doubt blamed us for Citadel Star Station, those fools. They've ended the world. Such hubris. We can see the contrails of the ICBMs flying from the motherland to North America and Europe. Hundreds of bright white lines drawing across the sky below. And, dear God, just as many flying back. To home. We will not float idly above and watch our homeland burn. We will inflict a strike on the Americans ourselves. The body of this station will come crashing down on NORAD and demolish the last refuge for the capitalist oligarchy. Dostvidanya, Tavarish. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? We have failed. A missile launched directly from Cheyenne Mountain caught us on our final burn. We have no propulsion and we'll crash off target in but a few seconds. My only satisfaction comes from knowing that America is burned and gutted. Nothing will survive here. Nothing. Huh. You know, that actually does provide some context to that audio tape we found. Apparently, the, uh... The commander here did not inform the rest of his crew about the, uh, the kamikaze run into NORAD, hence why they were caught so off guard by the sudden altitude warnings. And I guess their messy end was uh, when that missile struck the station and knocked it off course. That is presumably what killed them, seconds before the station crashed and killed everyone anyway. Side note, uh, they've waffled on it a bit, but... I believe it is now official that the uh, Cochise AI deliberately ignored the uh, warning signs of that meteor shower just so it could trigger a nuclear apocalypse and then uh, rebuild in the post-nuclear landscape. All right, we've got one last cluster of scar collectors. We're going to circle around and hit them from the other side. That'll give us a nice open shot at them. Yeah, yeah, looks like that should be it. Unless it branches off to the side. Look at that. 
So if we had done this the right way, we would have had some uh, little robot buddies to help us during the final assault. That's us, always making things unnecessarily difficult on ourselves. Oh, yeah, this will be much easier. Doll did not get rallied, so we'll just uh, kind of shuffle her aside. But that's just fine, because Bonkers is about to go full Death Blossom. bad. But you know what we need is more Death Blossom. That might be overkill. Lucia? Was a Russian satellite. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Pazepi. I don't know what we'd do without you and your your ability to make these incredible intuitive leaps. The lab equipment is adhered to the table, like someone was worried it would go flying. And a, uh, a communist hood ornament. Well, that's certainly not controversial. I will note, however, that uh, it is amusing that they're giving us this cosmetic item right before the point of no return. So, essentially... You'd never normally be able to equip that to your vehicle anyway. Though I suppose that does change with the uh, upcoming expansions. That said, uh, I think I will uh, personally stick with the Disco Bot. For Disco never truly dies. As long as it lives on within our hearts and minds. And also robots. Finish clearing steel traps goons out of the mine? Yep, that's one word for it. Rock on! Here's a little something for you. I'll get on the horn and rally the troops right now. Star Collectors, D Sharp is back from the dead and better than ever. Now, I've been hearing old Tin Teeth told you I ran away. Bullshit! Goddamn dry gulched me. And you know where I've been all this time? Slavin' in his hellhole tech mine. Anyhow, I heard y'all missed me, so I'm gonna throw y'all a party in the camp, but 
I need you to help me make the place festive first. That's right, scar collectors. When I get there, I want to see that coward steel trap's head on a plate! Ow! Holy shit! It's D. I knew that asshole was lying about her leaving. Steel Trap is gonna pay for this shit. We want D! We want D! You bitch! Who the hell let you out? I'm gonna bury you this time! Rancid! Get me my big gun! No! The big one! You ain't got a gun big enough to fix this, you rust-faced motherfucker! I'm coming for you! I'm gonna sing you your last song! Well, I guess that's that then. Thanks for the help, friends. It's good to be running this joint again. Okay. You know what? I'm actually feeling kind of good about this. Um... I don't know if we can really necessarily trust D Sharp long term, but short term, uh, she seems kind of on course to become like a new, a new Flab, the inhaler, you know, running a series of businesses as opposed to a slaver operation. Especially given that we've effectively killed every single scar collector in a 10 mile radius, and uh, her remaining clientele is nothing but escaped slaves. Slugs, I'm gonna rip D's throat out. That canary won't sing another fucking note! Not a chance, Steel Trap, you piece of shit! You don't deserve to call yourself a Scar Collector! That's a lot to take in. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Steel Trap is dead, uh, as are apparently the bulk of the Scar Collectors. And that guy was really good at operating a rocket launcher with buzz saws. I think that might actually be the most impressive part of this. Bear Trap Enthusiast, Spring 1987 Edition. This flashy magazine has the latest news on bear traps, bear traps, and bear traps. <laughs> you know, uh, as fun as this has been, I think uh, the one real big shame is that we never really got to interact with any of these colorful warlords. They were just kind of background boogeymen who die the second you finally see them. Uh, apparently the only way to actually interact with them and find out more about them is by recruiting and actively using Ironclad Cordite for the final stretch of missions. But in that case, you're basically either dooming Kansas, or you're setting your sights on conquering Colorado Springs yourself. So, you know, not really my style. That said, we are uh, indeed on course for the inevitable end. Only one obstacle remains between us and fulfilling our contract with the Patriarch. Then again, that does beg the question of uh, what exactly will happen once we do that. Colorado Springs is in pretty rough shape, so there's no guarantee that the Patriarch will uphold his end of the bargain. Not to mention, we've got a few rogue elements still in the mix. So, we will uh, hit the pause button for now, and we will pick up here next time. As, one way or another, this post-nuclear tale comes to an end. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, 
or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then uh, feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Would like eating fried potatoes as well?